Hello and welcome to a how-to guide on weathering. This project is to weather a 16 ton mineral wagon, in this case a dabble kit. I have already assembled it and applied the initial paint process to it and we're now sort of moving into the weathering process. The initial paint has had the sole bars etc with a, a dark grey, it's Revels Matte 78 and the upper sides have all been finished in a Halfords grey primer just the standard grey primer that they sell in all their stores so the paints that we're going to use tonight are going to be Matte 37 which is reddish brown Matte 78 uh, tank grey Matte 85 brown Matte 83 rust and Matte 84 leather brown um, with the, these paints and with a couple of paint brushes um, I'm going to show you my simple, what I think is a simple process for applying a weathering finish to it. The only other materials you really need are a piece of kitchen paper and pro probably it's also a good idea to have a photograph or two of a, a prototypes uh, so that you can refer to these and um, it, helps give a better sort of more realistic finish to it if you have something to refer to rather than just doing it from the top of your head so let's go on ahead and get started okay so I tend to start with a touch of the rust and we're taking as much off the brush as possible and we're just going to do random scatters maybe need a wee bit more on it than that random scatters just to show the rust that's coming through. And these have got toned down with the darker colours and also we'll use very light touches of the light colours just to highlight some of that rust look. But it's just as and where you feel. There's no sort of rhyme or reason to it. It's just whatever feels right. And each wagon then has a great individual look to it. Use a smaller brush a bit too for this. Pick up on some of these heavier ones. And this will all sort of blend down quite considerably whenever the other stuff is added to it. I'll take the brown, the leather brown acts as a great base coat for the rust, particularly in large areas. This particular one I'm doing is going to have quite a band of thick rust along it. Just like this here. And all the time I'm doing this I'm referring to the picture, the prototype picture help sort of give me some ideas to where I want to to place it on. Just for the actual dab to the brush, you can really give a random sort of feel to the whole thing. And next we will move on to, and we'll start introducing the reddish brown and 
Is it cold? What that orangey one is cold now, is it? It is well. You'll notice at this stage I haven't actually applied any transfers or decals. I find with the decals that I'm using that they can be quite um, they can react quite badly with the paint. So I tend to do most of the weathering beforehand because there's quite a bit of brush stroke movement and you know to a abrasive contact um, that if I have the decals on they can sort of break up a little bit. So I put this on first and then apply the decals afterwards and then just give a very light weathering to conclude over the top of the decals just to blend it all in. I think it just works a little bit better. And uh, and doing everything beforehand with the decals etc before weathering. That's not to say that the paints that you're using won't suit the, sort of the standard process first, you know applying decals first. But it works better this way for me. Now, a touch of the, the reddish brown. It's a very bold colour so we'll keep it to a mem. I've done too much there I think. I'm going to use a little bit of leather brown and bring that, blend all that back in a bit more. But as you can see there, just by applying the different colours all on top of it, it's sort of it's creating depth and layers to the paint, which is is what you want to do. So you maybe can't see it at times whenever the hand gets in the way. Yeah, this stage I'm going to. Probably leave that there and move on to the grey. The grey acts as a general grime colour, I suppose, to the whole wagon. So it's going to have a much sort of broader sw wash of it right across it. But I still like to do it in very light touches and let it build up naturally on its own. Uh, that way, then, if you've gone too far. You know, it's much more difficult to train it back in. If you do it this way here, it uh, it just helps to control what you're doing. see just with the grey coming in everything has just begun to blend in a little bit better there's colours aren't standing out just the same everything seems a little bit more natural
we're coming to the end of this process on this side. Um, I think I may just sort of hold fast on it there. We don't want to overdo it. Plus, also once it's dry, it'll maybe sort of soften up a wee bit. We'll apply the decals, and then if there are any areas that I feel still could do with a little bit of attention, I can look at it again. But really, this just hopefully gives you an indication as to how, fair, how simple this process is and how effective the final result can be. I'm not going to bother with the sole bars now, but what I would usually do with the sole bars would be use a little bit of rust brown and also a bit of a light grey just with a very light brush, brush touch over it. So there we have it. So I hope this has been of some help to you. Um, I hope you can take away some of these uh, methods and maybe use them yourself in your own kit building uh, and allow, allow you to enhance your either ready to roll or kit built stock. And I'll just leave you with a few photos of some of the wagons as they have, um, as they look once finished. Thanks for watching and uh, talk again soon.